directly sitting on a nerve ending because it is a neuron. It's a form of brain tissue. So if you happen to be jet black and you're walking around outside and there's a particular star that's up in the sky, the amount of light that's being pulsated from this particular star will actually hit your melanin granules. Your nerves will then relay that to the brain and it will make an image. So these individuals then knew that as they lived from month to month, year to year, that there would be certain patterns in the sky and they just actually recorded them on paper, on straw, on their clothing. So then when the Europeans were able to find out where this tribe was, however they discovered them, and one individual happened to recognize that these were actually the same patterns of heavenly bodies that they had to create a radio telescope and special x-ray film to be able to know that these bodies were up there. These individuals are walking around with no clothing on and no shoes. How could they have the same star charts? And the reason is because the melanin functions the same way. Now, many of our ancestors, our immediate ancestors, grandparents, great-grandparents, have talked about the visions that they've had, the voices that they've had, and even our little children are all the time talking to beings and entities. Now, they are actually hearing at a distance and also hearing in different dimensions. Now, these, were, these things were all known to us, but for whatever reason, and that we won't go into that this time because we're gonna stay strictly on melanin, we have begun to ignore and to educate this awareness out of ourselves, which causes us to have specific and severe problems in being able to communicate. This is a tremendous gift that allows us to be able to be aware of all things in all areas that we might be in and our knowledge of ourselves and what it is that we might be perceiving is very, very important for us to be able to be aware of. Let me talk about some things in here that I think are very basic before we go on for us to understand. Now, when I decided that uh, I needed to write down on paper, a lot of the information that I had uh, discovered, I chose something that most of us had been exposed to, minerals and vitamins, to begin to give this information as to how something so simple as a mineral and vitamin might be different in concentration or type based upon the amount of melanin that you have. But well, when I began to look at the biochemistry of melanin, it was very interesting to recognize that many of the vitamins and minerals that are prescribed are part of the melanin molecule already. Vitamin D is part of the melanin molecule. All you have to do is go outside for 20 minutes and stand in the sun and your body makes vitamin D for you. It's something that you never have to take. So it made sense to me then that those individuals who live in the north where there was very little sun, okay, let me just, excuse me, give you some further information on vitamin D. We need vitamin D to be able to absorb and utilize calcium. So, if you lived in the north where there is very little sun and you stayed there long enough, eventually you wound up being very pale and having what appears to be no melanin. So, obviously you need calcium for your bone structure, your hair and nails. How are you going to get it? Well, you can't make it from the melanin because you don't have it. So therefore, a big research project took effect to find out what outside of ourselves could be identified to make melanin since we no longer could make it from within. And it was discovered that cod liver oil was very high in vitamin D. So if we caught these fish and took the fat off of them and stored it and took a little bit every day, then we'd be able to hold on to our calcium and absorb that that was in our food. So now when you recognize that and you realize that now you're standing there in the store next to somebody who's jet black and they come over and they ask you what type of vitamin D or cod liver oil would be good for them, what do you do? Because you know that this individual does not need cod liver oil. And as a matter of fact, them taking cod liver oil starts to actually produce crystallization and hardening in their soft tissues. 
So they start getting all these little lumps and knots and things under the skin and in the muscle because they have too much vitamin D and they're absorbing and holding on to too much calcium that can't be deposited in the bone, so then the body has to take it and deposit it somewhere else, but calcium is not supposed to be there. We found out that riboflavin, for example, and uh, yeah, pyridoxin are normal parts of the melanin molecule, where pyridoxin and riboflavin are very important to prevent certain skin diseases uh, and to propel certain reactions to occur in the body. As long as you have melanin, you don't ever need to take these particular vitamins. Now it's very interesting because when I did the research, I noticed that many health books, many health practitioners are talking about niacin. That if you have poor circulation, that you should take niacin because niacin opens up your circulation so that the tissues can get oxygen. But when I did the research on niacin, I found out that niacin is a byproduct of the toxic drug known as nicotine, and that it was not a vitamin at all. It is actually an addictive drug known as nicotine. It's a byproduct of that. But this particular byproduct of nicotine has the capacity to cause the superficial blood vessels to dilate. So I was like, oh, that's real interesting. Well, let's find out more about that. Well, I found out that individuals who have very clumpy melanin, which appears as though they don't have any, okay, what we call melanin recessive individuals, also do not have a complete, well-developed superficial circulation. So it's very interesting because as I talked about earlier, the fact that the more melanin you have, you also have a nerve ending connected to the melanin granule, which means you have two brains, one outside and one inside your head. Now, for all those melanin granules you have, especially the darker you are, you've got to get oxygen to them. So the body knows that and makes sure that you have a circulatory system that will carry the blood to the melanin granule so that it will stay alive to relay information to the nerve that it's attached to so that it gets back to your brain so you can make a decision about what it is that you found out is going on in your environment. So therefore, the melanin dominant individual has two circulatory systems, a deep circulatory system and a superficial circulatory system, just like they have an internal and external brain. Individuals who are melanin recessive only have a deep circulatory system, and they do not have a well-developed superficial circulatory system. So therefore, because they knew that about themselves, they had to have a means of being able to drive the blood to the skin. So when they found out about niacin that causes the superficial blood vessels to dilate, this was an excellent idea to take this so that the superficial blood vessels could get bigger so that more blood could get to the skin. And to then make it something essential in your diet, that is to make it a vitamin, would mean that you would always ensure, if you taught your children this, that this was something that they would make sure that they would want to have. Now I'm like, oh, that's very interesting. So this isn't even a vitamin, and it's not even something that we're supposed to take. Because now when we look at the effect of what nicotine does to the melanin molecule, it's horrendous. Nicotine actually just about deactivates the melanin molecule. It actually causes a sludging effect and it actually diminishes its capacity to actually even pick up frequencies of light to relay the information to the brain. So it's very, very interesting because unlike Caucasians that smoke heavily, when we look at the whites of the eye, when we look at the color or luster of the skin of melanin dominant individuals that take in nicotine, it totally shuts their lights out. That is to say that you can walk up the street and see a black person who smokes because they look like someone has blown soot on their face. They have no luster at all, there's no light, there's no sheen at all.